Hello and welcome to Jesus for Asia Now. Today I have my friend Sharon with me and we're going to be talking about her recent trip to India. She's got some amazing stories to share and I know I'm looking forward to it. Welcome to the show, Sharon. Thank you. So glad you could be here. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. All right. Well, I know that you have a lot to share, <laughs> but we want to start out with what do you do for Jesus for Asia? I provide administrative support, which is anything that's not really accounting, not production, and that big swath in the middle is what I get to do. But you also help with accounting occasionally. I do. I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we appreciate your moving here to work with Thank us. You. Thank you. Yeah, that's a whole other story. That is Perhaps for another we should episode. Tell that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but what we want to talk about today is your trip to India. Mm -hmm. So why did you go to India? What inspired you to go on this trip? Well, we wanted as a team to be able to collect stories firsthand from our evening schools and our Bible workers. And so John put together a team to go and do that. So we were able to visit Bible workers and evening schools and hear stories. And it was very valuable. And we learned a lot. And we have exciting things to share over time as we can put them together and put them out. Right. So what was the trip like? Was it like you went one place and you stayed there and you just had places you could walk to? What was it like? Did you do a lot of traveling where you were? Or? Yeah, so we did, we stayed in one place for about a week. But beyond that, we were in different places as we as we went. So my colleague, Christina and I, who you interviewed already, so be sure to watch that great episode. Uh, we felt very discombobulated at first because every night we were in a new place. Mm. And that was a little bit difficult to get used to the culture and the time change and be in a different place. Right. But then we got a chance to spend time for about a week in the Udamal Pet area. And then we moved from place to place after that. So it was both. So tell me about culture shock for sure. you there. Was this your first trip to India? So everything was a surprise and everything was new or? Well, actually both. So I have been to India three times before, once with a sponsoring organization for children and twice for work in my previous job. And so this was my fourth trip. But this was the first time that I was actually with the people and so I saw a different side of India than I did the previous three trips. So I knew what to expect, but the depth and the intensity of it was a little bit different because we stayed in places that I wouldn't have stayed before because of the groups I, I was with. So we saw poverty up close and personal and stayed there. We did not escape to a Western hotel and so i had my first bucket bath um and and we ate at the local restaurants we didn't eat at a western restaurant and so this trip was a little different because i experienced more of the real indian culture than i had in the past wow so it was it was a bit of an adjustment for yes. you to yes go it was there. yes it was so are there any particular experiences that stand out to you Anything you want to share with us? I mean, uh, so uh, we went to various evening schools and met and interviewed Bible workers. And I did want to share some of the experiences that we had. And I met a Bible worker by the name of Vimal. And Vimal works in an area that is predominantly Hindu. And she characterizes the people as very faithful to their religion. So she has found a way to be able to minister to them and found that praying with the Hindu families mm -hmm. is a great way to become friends with them. They are more than uh, eager to have someone pray with them. So she goes from one house to the next and offers to pray with people. And that's how she gets to know them. And she met a 14 year old girl who had tuberculosis. And this young girl's uh, disease had progressed to the place where she was coughing up blood. And that means that her lungs had been damaged to this point and the blood vessels inside her lungs had been damaged so that she was coughing up the blood. And Vimal prayed for her. Hmm. And a few days later, the young girl went back to the doctor. There was no sign of tuberculosis. Wow. And for me, that's significant because I used to work in the tuberculosis research arena and tuberculosis does not spontaneously 
heal without medication, months and months of medication. So this really was and an intervention of God. Yeah, sometimes it's to the point where it can't heal anyway, right. even with the medication, yes, right? Absolutely. The damage is if so bad had, already. Correct, correct. So this family was overjoyed, obviously, because untreated tuberculosis is a death sentence for, right. for people. And if they don't have the money for the medication, they know they're going, they're going, to, going die. to die. Wow. And to have God heal her, it blew their minds and they all started studying the Bible together and the parents have already been baptized and the wow. young girl is still studying and is going to be baptized soon. And it's all because a little woman went door to door and prayed and did what she could and prayed. Wow, that's really neat. Well, I know that's not the only story no. that you have to share with us. Right. So the next story is about Sudina and she is one of our JFA Bible workers as well. And this lady is 70 years old. Wow. And she has the energy <laughs> of a 30 year old. It was hard to keep up with her. Wow. And her area is also mostly um, Hindu, but she has other religious beliefs in her community. And she also goes out and visits. And that's what they do, they visit. And she met a woman and gifted her with the Bible and then invited her to read with her. So the two of them began reading. Okay. And as they read, more people started coming and joining and saying, we wanna be a part of what you're doing. Hmm. And soon Sudina had a whole group of people. So Sudina opened her home on Saturday mornings for what we would consider a church service. They would get like together a like a house church. So they would read the Bible and they would pray. And this group became a prayer group. Now these were not Seventh-day Adventists. These were a mix of religions coming together to pray because they believed in what Sudina was teaching them. Hmm. So the first lady that Sudina met, the one that she gifted the Bible, her sister began having problems with her stomach and she was diagnosed with a tumor and they say that the tumor was about this big. It was, it was wow. huge. So the prayer group got into action and started praying. Wow. And the sister went to the doctor and they scheduled an operation and said it would cost 150,000 rupees in order to have the operation. Wow, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money and that family could not pay 150,000 rupees. Yeah, so, just for our viewers sake, yes. right now the yeah. exchange rate is just under 70. So it's, well, actually just around 69. Mm -hmm. okay. So that gives our viewers some sort of So it's one US dollar for 69 right. rupees. Right. Right. So it's a lot of money for a very poor family, 150,000 rupees was huge. Right. So the prayer group got back together again and kept praying. And then out of the blue, without any explanation, the doctors called the sister and said, we're going to only charge you 30,000 rupees for wow. the whole thing, for the operation, for the pre-op, for the post-op, wow. all done, 30,000 rupees. Wow. So the sister had the operation. They were able to take the entire tumor out. She was healing and felt better. And she contacted Sudina and said, I want to know about the God you serve because my gods were not able to help me at all, and your God did. So I want to study the Bible with you. Wow. And that's prayer. And that's something yes. that's very easy for a person to do is just to pray. We saw Vimal praying right. and Sudina praying. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's, yeah, like you said, anybody can do that. And we all can be a part, you know, right. as God impresses you mm -hmm. to what, why would she just give some total stranger a Bible? But God impressed her, obviously. He yeah. knew that the heart was receptive. Right. And so the Lord was able to right. bless and her sister. And she opened her home. Yes. And, that, and so she created a safe place for people to come. Yeah. And any one of us can do the exact same thing, and God can work through that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Again, it's just so amazing to see God heal someone for the sake of teaching them about Himself and raising interest in Himself. Right showing his love and his character. The interesting thing though, is that in the first story, God healed her completely by a miracle. And in this story, he used physicians to do it. Mm -hmm. And so God heals in various ways. Right, his, it's, not a cut, it's not a cookie cutter. Right, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Wow, well, we wanna keep going because I know you have yeah. more stories. Yes. 
So the next one. The next one is about Sushila. And she's another JFA Bible worker. And she was walking from the train to a prayer appointment. And on the way, she met a woman who was crying, just sad and crying. And Sushila could have kept walking mm -hmm. to her appointment, but she didn't. She stopped and she asked the woman, what's wrong? Why mm -hmm. are you crying? And the woman shared that she belonged to a Christian church. So she, they have a, a large uh, Christian contingent in the South, a church um, that's, that's down there, a denomination. And this woman was talking about how alone she was. Mm. So she had no children, no husband, no parents, and she was sick. She was having uterine issues that needed intervention by a physician. Mm. And she was alone and she was scared and she didn't know what to do. So Sushila prayed for her right there mm. and then gave her her phone number and continued on to her prayer appointment. Later that evening, the woman did call Sushila and say, okay, we have the operation scheduled. Would you pray for me? And so Sushila prayed. And then on the day of the operation, the woman called her and said, I am so scared. I have oh. never had an operation before. I don't know what this is going to be like. And Sushila prayed for her again that the operation would go well and that the God would be with the, the hands of the surgeon. And the surgery went swimmingly well. There were no complications. Wow. And, and the woman was so thankful, but this is what impressed me about the story. She told Sushila that she had been going to this church and people knew what she was going through, but no one in that church prayed for her or with her. Wow. And she said, I want to go to your church, Sushila, because you're the only one who took the time to pray with me. And she's now in the church as a result. Wow. And that's something, you know, we can take a lesson from that here. Right. People around us yes. that we might even see every single day are hurting in ways right. we may not know or we may know. Right. But if we don't take the time to pray with them, mm -hmm. we're not really helping them. We're not no. buoying them up with, with our care and our right. sympathy. Right. And she was so alone that she didn't know who to turn to. And if the people you're going to church with every week are not reaching out to help you either, then what do you do? And God placed Sushila right there and had her stop. And she listened because she could have said, I've got to get to my appointment. appointment, but she didn't. And as a result of, of Sushila listening to God saying, pause, someone was brought into the full truth and she's part of the church. Wow. What a yeah. blessing. Yeah. What a blessing. I love these Bible workers. <laughs> yeah. They are so amazing. <laughs> they are. They really are. They work night. They work day. It's amazing what they do. Yeah. Yeah. So again, God helped her to see somebody mm -hmm. that needed help. And yes. she was willing to stop and yes. talk to her and pray with her. Yes. Wow. Yeah, because we never know when God gives us, you know, speak to this person or stop and talk to them, share this with them. We don't know what's going on behind the scenes. And we may feel uncomfortable and say, oh, that person does, I don't want to bother them. I don't know They're them. Not ready. Don't yeah. Know. But God knows. Right. And God knew that this woman was in a position to hear the truth because she was so lonely and God was meeting that need for her. Right. And you know, another thing that I think that we can remember is that we get so busy sometimes that mm -hmm. we're just rushing to the next thing. Yes. And she could very easily have been caught by that as well, you know, mm -hmm. rushing to the appointment. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say we need to slow down. Yeah. So we can have time to stop and do what God asks us to do. Exactly. That's really... Yeah, that's a powerful that lesson. That really came out of yes. the story to me. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, I know we're not done with your stories no. <laughs> yet. I know you have a lot more than you're going to share today yes. as yes. well. But yeah. we're just grabbing the few minutes that we have to yeah. share. So the next one is about somebody that you got to meet yes. and witness with. Yes. So during the time that we were in India, we actually had drivers hired to drive us around because the India traffic is crazy, if anyone has been there. And it was much safer to have an experienced 
driver who knows how to get around uh, to work with us rather than one of us trying to to drive the van that we had acquired to move the equipment and and the team around. So we had a total of four drivers, Mm -hmm. um, but I wanted to talk about the first one and his name is Selva Kumar. And he was a young man, very quiet. He was a Hindu, Hindu boy, and he was was very good at driving, but he didn't interact that much with us. Just got in the car, where are we going? Drove. But he had been with us long enough that over time we would ask questions through Israel Prasad, our director in India, Mm -hmm. who was sitting on the front seat with him, and we would direct questions and just ask personal questions. And over time, Selva Kumar opened up to us because um, nice. we are a force to be reckoned with. And so it's very <laughs> difficult for him to stay quiet. We will with be us. your friend. That's right. We will be your friend. And we included him when we would stop somewhere. If we were traveling uh, for the day and we stopped somewhere to eat, we would bring him to the table with us and include him. And he became... Which is unusual. Oh, That yeah. is unusual. Yeah. yeah, it is. The drivers expect that they're going to go eat somewhere else or... Right. Right. Yeah. Right. So he got to see a lot of what we do. And we went to one village, Amaravati, which there will be an entire show about Amaravati. And I don't want to spoil it for the viewers (laughs) because it's a it's a fabulous story. But we did not know that our driver was from Amaravati. Wow. And we found out later, he actually got out of the van at, while we were there and wandered through the village with us. And the picture that's being shown is of him sitting in the village. And he saw us interacting with the people. He saw us making friends. He saw us, you know, he listened to the interviews that we were doing of the evening school teacher and cook there. And Israel told us a couple of days later that Selva Kumar was very impressed Mm. with us because he said nobody goes to Amaravati. Mm. Nobody, no Westerners go, very few church people go. It's, it's an out of the way place, which you will, the viewers will see in the, in the episode. And it really touched his heart. Mm. And a few days later, we wanted to bless the village with some mats and blankets and I was praying that Selva Kumar would be there Mm. because it was his area and I wanted him to be a part of this. Well, Sunday morning, the morning that we were going to go, there was a new driver sitting in the van. And I was very sad that we had a new driver. I was expecting Selva Kumar to be there. But Israel said that Selva Kumar needed to go to a wedding. Mm. And so he was not going to be our driver. Wow. I was very sad, but I prayed throughout the day that God would open the door somehow for Selva Kumar to be there because I was sure that that's where he needed to be. Mm-hmm. Later in the afternoon, Selva Kumar actually called Israel and said, I want to come oh. and I will meet you there. Wow. So we were all excited. And by the time we got there in the evening to hand out the blankets and the mats, Selva Kumar came. Wow. And not only did he join us, but he joined in blessing the families. And that made such a huge impact on him. He was so happy to be there. And the picture, you can see him standing behind John, smiling as he's grabbing the next bundle to hand out to to a family. And unfortunately, that was the last day we saw Selva Kumar. He, wow. he had other things he had to do. We moved on from the area. We had a new driver. And I didn't get a chance to talk to Selva Kumar after that. But a few weeks ago, Israel texted me and said that he had been back in the area and actually connected with Selva Kumar. And that Selva was having some family issues and wanted prayer. Nice. So Selva is interested in hearing more about the God that he witnessed acting on behalf of the village. So we don't know what that story is going to be like. I was part of the middle of Selva Kumar's story, not the end, but I'm looking forward in heaven to getting to hear the rest of the story from Selva Kumar himself. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That just... (laughs) I know. (laughs) Sorry. That just really touches me because these, 
it's so easy to pass by people, you know, you mm-hmm. ride in a taxi somewhere or you're even on a train or something and you pass by people, you pass by so yeah. many people without interacting with them. Right. And sometimes God wants to touch their lives through us. Yes. And that's such a blessing. It's such a privilege. Yes. To be a part of touching somebody else's life. Yeah. So, yeah, I was very, we were all very happy. He was like family by the time we were done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. All right. So now we have another story. Right. We do. We mm-hmm. have a story about Santosh, who is the son of one of our JFA Bible workers. Okay. And Santosh is a businessman, and he owns DM Engineering just outside of Coimbatore, and they make very large hydraulic machinery. And their company is a Sabbath-keeping company. And he closes the business down on Friday evening and Saturday. Mm. And here in the United States, that may not be a big deal, But in India, that's a big deal because most people are off on Sundays. So Mm. Sunday has become the family day where families go and visit other family or they take a trip or they just hang out at home. And the workers who work at DM Engineering are mostly Hindu and Mm. they were not happy when they first started because they had to work on Sundays and they wanted to be home with their family. Mm. But Santosh works really hard there in this very small company to make sure that the workers are treated well, that their pay is well, that their benefits are well, and God has blessed this company. It is a very small manufacturing plant, and yet they do business globally. This little company in Coimbatore, India, has orders from Europe, from Egypt, from Africa, because they're honoring God. Mm -hmm. And over time, the workers have really come to appreciate what they have there, and Mm -hmm. they are happily joining in on Sundays, and they use Saturday now as their day to be with their families. And Santosh brings his father, the Bible worker, in a couple of times a week to pray with the men. And that has been a huge blessing for the men to be able to have someone that they can can talk to. And so their businesses around have slowly gone out of business. You'll see a picture of the um, drone shot of the area. There are a number of businesses there, but only DM Engineering is still alive wow. and well because God is blessing. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Well, I know that this this affected you a lot in different ways, yes. this trip. Yes. And I know the last story, we want to get to your last story because right. we're running out of time very right. quickly. Yeah. So share with us your last story. Last story. Um, the last story, I don't have any pictures of, um, but it's about a, a man that I saw. When we were driving in the van, I would look out the window at the passing scenery and the villages, and I would pray for the villages on my side of the road. Christina was on the other side of the van and she was on that side of the road and I was on this side of the road and I would pray for the villages and the people that I saw because I had no idea if anyone would ever be there. And we were headed back to Coimbatore and we were getting ready the next day to leave to go to Chennai. And there is a road, a major road around Coimbatore, kind of like a beltway that we would think of here in the United States. And as we were approaching the northeast corner and I was looking out the window and, and, and praying for people, I noticed a construction site. And what caught my eye is that the men were picking up these heavy blocks by themselves. There was no machinery moving the blocks, they were picking the blocks up from a pile and walking them down to where they were going to be used. And one of the men that was there, his, he was older and he was crippled in his right foot. And it looked like he was wearing an invisible high heel. He was mm. only able to walk on the ball of that foot. And there he was struggling to carry the blocks from the pile 
to the end. He was doing as best he could, but it was a struggle for him. Mm. And I looked at him and the thought that came to my to my mind so strongly was, who is going to go and tell this man about Jesus? Mm. Who is going to tell this man who's struggling with this job and wanting to put food on the table mm. and he looks so tired and so stressed, no peace, no joy, just walking from one place to the next with these heavy bricks, who's going to tell him about Jesus? Mm -hmm. And I burst into tears in the van thinking that this man could very well go to his grave with no one telling him about the father who loved him. Mm -hmm. And that's what impacted me the most on this, on this trip, is seeing the faces of the people with no hope. You would walk, drive down the street, walk down the street. Many people, many, many people, it's crowded streets and roads, and everyone just had this look of despair with no hope. Mm. Until you would get to an evening school where the children have learned about Jesus and their eyes are bright and their faces are happy. Or you look into the eyes of the Bible workers that we saw where they have the joy of sharing Jesus with people. The ones who know Jesus, are the ones with the joy and everyone else is so sad and mm. no hope. And that's what we have here. We know this, we have this hope, but they don't and they have no way of finding it unless someone goes and tells them. Wow, what an impactful yeah. moment. Quick snap picture yeah. in your mind's eye because you didn't take any pictures. I didn't. We were driving. You will not. You will not forget that. No, that's happened to me before as well. Yeah, it's just something that it's you get a glimpse into God's longing. Yeah, into His heart for yeah. these people. Yeah, and um, it's really a blessing to have that. Yeah, and it it increases the burden mm -hmm. for the lost as well. Yeah, it really does. <laughs> Wow. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to share with us today. It's sure. been a real blessing. Thank you. I've enjoyed it. <laughs> I would like to invite you as our viewers to get involved in these Bible workers' lives to help bring hope to people like that old man, that you can pray for them, you can be a part, and if you would like to sponsor the Bible workers, you can contact us at Jesus for Asia, P.O. Box 1221, College Dale, Tennessee, 37315. Call us at 423-413-7321 or visit our website at jesusforasia.org. Please join us in praying for these Bible workers and for hope to be brought to the millions that don't know Jesus. May God bless you richly until we see you next time on Jesus for Asia Now.